What's crack lacking pre-calculus? This is Mr. Taren rocking with you again. We're looking at 2.1 part two. And in this section, we're gonna be looking at uh, graphing and analyzing radical functions as well as solving radical equations. Um, really, we, what you gotta be careful with here is uh, when we get into the solving the radical equations, it can get pretty crazy. But let's just hop right into it. Um, these are your objectives here, graph and analyze radical functions and solve radical equations. I just mentioned that, so let's hop right into it here. Um, these are just generally what your radical functions look like. If you have an even um, index is what it's called. It's this little number right outside the square root symbol. If you have an even index, it's gonna look something like that. If you have an odd index, remember it's this number, it'll look something like that. So all we're gonna do here is we're gonna have an example where we have um, a graph and then we're gonna tell everything there is to know about it, just like we did before. So right here, graph and analyze f of x equals five square root two x to the third. Well, the first thing I'm gonna ask myself is, is this an even or odd radical function? And because there is no number right here, it is presumed to be a two, which means it's an even function, so my function will look something more or less like that. Um, that's not a perfect graph, obviously, but yeah, it's, it's enough for me to work with. So let's take a look at the domain here. Let me see if I can squeeze this down a little bit. All right, so domain, just by looking at this graph, it looks like the, the furthest to the left the x values go is about right here, which is at zero. Let me try and redraw this graph a little bit nicer. That's more or less what it should look like. So notice it stops right here at zero, and zero is included, so we would say the domain would be from zero to positive infinity. Uh, the range, again, starts here right at zero, and it looks like this line goes up forever, so my range would also be zero to infinity. Um, intercepts, so let's go x int, y int, they look like they're both right here at zero, so I'm gonna say zero, zero, and zero, zero. Uh, end behavior, now this graph is only going in one direction here. Um, so I only have to look at one, I only have to give one limit statement. So end behavior, um, I would say the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity, right, we're going this way. So what we're saying is as my x values approach infinity, what's happening to my line? Well, my line looks like it's going to approach positive infinity. Uh, continuity, um, it looks like it's continuous everywhere on the graph, but I would say something more, more specific, maybe um, continuous um, Let's see, I would say continuous well, on the interval zero to infinity, because this is continuous, this whole thing. Uh, let's see, and then increasing or decreasing, obviously it is increasing um, on this interval right here the whole time, so it would be increasing from zero to infinity, and there is nowhere where it is decreasing at all. So that's that first example. Um, I'm not gonna go over another one. If you would like, just ask your teacher, but I try to keep these videos relatively short so that you're not uh, super bored. Um, those are the answers we just came up with. Uh, so we're all good there. Let's keep moving on. Let's take a look at some vocabulary here because we're gonna get into solving radical equations. And whenever we solve a radical equation, um, sometimes there's what's called an extraneous solution, and that's just a solution that we get that when we plug it back into the original equation, it gives us an answer that doesn't make sense. So the best way to kind of show you that is probably to do maybe an example or two. These are the steps to solving radical equations. Uh, you definitely want to write these down in your notes. Um, a good way to remember this, even though this is kind of silly, is I know this as ISIS. Not the terrorist organization, but if you look, the I comes from the first step. Isolate your radical. So if you have a radical, you need to get that by itself. Then you need to square both sides. 
Then if you have a second radical, you need to isolate it again, and then you need to square both sides again. And at that point, you can solve for your variable. But keep in mind, checking for extraneous solutions. So let's just do an example here. That's the best way to do this. Um, this one looks like it's already been solved, but I'm just going to go ahead and solve it. Oops, let's uh, erase that. Let's go ahead and uh, move that off to the side and really give ourselves some room to work with here. So the question was 2x equals square root 28x plus 29 minus 3. So remember, ISIS. ISIS, not the terrorists. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to isolate this radical. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 3 to both sides, and I get 2x plus 3 is equal to the square root of 28x plus 29. The so we're done with isolating the first variable. The next thing we need to do is square both sides. So that is what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to square this side, and I'm going to square this side. The reason why we're squaring this both sides is this square and this square root will cancel, and I'm left with 28x plus 29. Now, when you're doing the 2x plus 3 squared, remember, that is 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. It is not... 2x plus 3 squared is not just 4x squared plus 9. Don't do that. Lots of people do that. No. Bad. Do not do that. Whenever you're squaring, make sure you are distributing them. Okay? We're going to erase this real quick. And let's go ahead and keep moving along. So, I'm going to distribute these. Uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times 3 is plus 6x. 3 times 2x is plus 6x. 3 times 3 is plus 9. Combine my like terms, and I get 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. So I'm going to bring all that over right here. Okay. Um, now... It's just a basic uh, multi-step um, equation at this point because the radical is gone. So let's just kind of start moving stuff to one side. Notice my squared units are over here. So I think I'm going to move this stuff over. So that means I'm going to subtract 28x and I'm going to subtract 29. So I'm, when I bring this down, I'm going to have 4x squared and then I have um, the 12x minus that 28x is going to be negative, uh, let's see here, 16x. Um, and then I have this positive 9 here, but I'm subtracting 29, so that should be minus 20 equals 0. At this point, you should be asking yourself or thinking to yourself, oh, wait, I know what that looks like. I've seen that before. That's just a quadratic. And when we do quadratics, we generally factor and all that stuff. So if you remember factoring, let's see if we can move this out of the way. Factoring, one of the first things you always want to look for is, you know, does this have a greatest common factor? And if you look here, all these can be divided by 4. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide all this by 4. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So this is just going to be x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Now we got it down to something pretty manageable. We're going to factor this. It looks like x minus 5, x plus 1. Use zero product property here. So x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. So x equals 5, and x equals negative 1. It is kind of a beast. It's a long question. And then you, know, you say here, oh, great, I'm done. Well, you're not done yet. Remember, we need to check for extraneous solutions. So if we check here, the original here, let me find it, was 
2x equals square root 20x plus 29. So let's write that right over here. Okay, so 2x equals square root 28x plus 29 minus 3. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this 5. So 2 times 5, and we're going to check, does that equal 28 times 5 plus 29 all minus 3? So 2 times 5 is 10. I'm going to use a calculator here for the other part. I'm just going to plug all this straight into my calculator right now. Um, so square root... Uh, 28 times 5 plus 29 and then minus 3 and I'm getting that's 10 as well so that works out so I know this is for sure a solution next thing I'm going to do is plug in a negative 1 so 2 times negative 1 again I'm plugging right into this original square root of 28 times negative 1 sorry 28 no let's erase Twenty-eight. Oops, sorry about that. Twenty-eight times negative one um, plus twenty-nine minus three. Sorry, it's getting a little bit messy here. So negative two. Two times one is negative two. Uh, twenty-eight times negative one is negative tw or is negative twenty-eight plus twenty-nine is one. Square root of 1 is 1, so 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so it looks like this one works out just fine as well. So for this example, there are no extraneous solutions, so my answer would just be x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. But yeah, those are, those could be pretty long questions, so yeah, we're going to move on. Um... We checked, we already did all that right here because the next example is a, is a, and I'm actually going to stop the video. We have a radical on both sides. And so that's going to be a long video. It's going to be long to explain that whole process. So I'm going to make a separate video for that. So just keep working hard guys and I'll catch you next time.